Today, the Church celebrates the feast of Saint Eusebius of Vercelli. Saint Eusebius take us, takes us back to a time when the Church was um, torn apart by conflict. Conflict between Catholic Christians, that is, those who signed up to the Nicene Creed, and those who supported the Arian heresy. Arians simply denied the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. They denied the fact that he was equal to the Father. And Eusebius did a lot to combat, to counter the Arian heresy, working with other bishops and working with other saints of his time, such as with Hilary of Poitiers and Saint Athanasius. And also he did a lot to consolidate the faith in his own diocese, the diocese of Vercelli in the north uh, northwest of Italy. He was born in Sardinia around the year 300 or perhaps just a few years before and uh, the first record of him that we have is as the Bishop of Vercelli. As Bishop there he did something fairly extraordinary for the time. Remember we are in the fourth century and he instituted a community around himself where he, the bishop, <clears throat> and his clergy could live together, formed by a common life of prayer for the sanctification of the people. This was very important to him and set a model for other dioceses. Eusebius attended the Synod of Milan in the year 355. That Synod had been called to try and dissipate the troubles between Arians and Catholic Christians. Eusebius had his reservations about the Synod. He knew that the Arians had the upper hand, the faction of the Arians was numerous and quite loud. They demanded the condemnation of Saint Athanasius. Eusebius went to the council, went to the Synod of Milan, and the first thing he did, reportedly, he laid on the table the text of the Nicene Creed. And he demanded everyone, every other bishop, to sign it before any proceeding could start. The Catholic bishops signed it, but the Arians didn't. In fact, one of them stood up and tore the document, tore the Nicene Creed apart. The situation quickly escalated. And the Emperor Constantius uh, called the Synod into his palace. Constantius was a sympathizer of the Arians and threatened to kill Eusebius, but then he simply, simply sent him into exile to Palestine. When Eusebius arrived there, he was maltreated, beaten, he was dragged in the streets by the Arians and shut up, locked up in a small cell for days. Throughout his exile, Eusebius went to Asia Minor and then to Egypt and uh, he was allowed to take part in the Synod of Alexandria. Only when the emperor died and a new emperor acceded to the throne, he was allowed back to Vercelli, to his diocese. And when he went back, 
we may expect anyone to retaliate against the Aryans or those who had run his diocese in his absence. But no, he didn't. He simply continued his mission to consolidate and further the Catholic faith against the heresy. Now, in our time, our time is very different. We don't have a state that tells us what we should believe or should not believe. We don't have that. And yet it's very important that we take a stand for the faith, for the right faith, like Eusebius did. And Eusebius gives us an example that even though we may be outnumbered, even though we may be few and sometimes downcast in our hearts, the important thing is that we carry on, that we carry on test, uh, bringing testimony to the true faith and to the Lord Jesus Christ.